What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, clearly tender because it's shreddable, amazing hand brined pork shanks with a honey mustard barbecue sauce. Coming up! These are some pork shanks. Pat them dry. Beautiful cut the old pork shank is. This is the forearm of the pig and it is super meaty. Got a big bone running through it. Nice fat cap on there. And these are really great for low and slow cooking like braising or throwing on the barbecue pit. And I got these from the sponsor of this week's video. Porter Road. I must say, I'm very happy to be working with Porter Road yet again. They've been a friend of the channel for a long time, and everything I've had from them has been super tasty. But if you're unfamiliar with Porter Road, they're a butcher shop that delivers high quality meat right to your door. A Nashville based butcher shop with a Kentucky facility where they expertly cut every piece of meat by hand to ensure high quality and precision. And they really do a great job. Every piece of meat I've ever got from them comes perfectly vac sealed and is nicely trussed up, nicely trimmed. There's never any flaps hanging off, there's never a scalped fat cap. And you can really tell they know what they're doing and they care about what they're doing. With a wide variety of dry aged beef, pork, and chicken, they offer all the essential cuts you know and love, but they also specialize in a lot of the off cuts, the secret cuts, the butcher cuts, like the hanger steak, pig wings, Denver steaks, beef belly, and many more cuts like that that you're definitely not going to find in your local grocery store. My favorite part about Porter Road is that they work with trusted farmers who raise animals the right way, ethically treated, humanely on pasture, with no added hormones or antibiotics. And the fact that all their beef is dry aged is just fantastic and so good. Not to mention all their chops and steaks ship free fresh, never frozen. So if you want to shop like you're at the local butcher a la carte by picking out individual steaks and cuts that you want to have shipped right to your door, or sign up for a subscription box that ships to your door every two, four, or eight weeks, head over to porterroad.com using the link in the description of this video to get 15% off your first order. Again, link in the description, that's porterroad.com. Using my link, you get 15% off your first order. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Porter Road. Now, as tasty as these would be to just throw on the grill or just toss on the smoker and cook to tenderness, today we're gonna add some more flavor by brining them in a ham brine first. And to make that, it's super easy. Starting by toasting off a few of our spices, including some coriander, some allspice berries, a cinnamon stick, some yellow mustard seeds, two star anise, and a couple of cloves. And just let those toast until they are popping and smelling nice and fragrant. Only takes a minute or so. You definitely don't want to burn any of these. And once they're nicely toasted, we're going to go in with some water. Just going to let that come back up to a simmer. We'll go with two quarts today. And once up to a simmer, we're going to go in with our kosher salt, our brown sugar, and our pink curing salt number one. And just give that a nice little whisk until everything is dissolved. Beautiful. Now we're going to go in with the rest of our ingredients, including some red chili flakes, some crushed garlic, a couple of bay leaves, some thyme, and some rosemary. And we're just going to let this cook for another few minutes until everything is hydrated and this is smelling so good. And into our vessel we go. And to cool this down, we're going to go in with the rest of our water in ice water form. Because we definitely don't want to be putting our meat into a super hot brine. One gallon of water total. And simply enough, in we go with these beautiful pork shanks. Oh man, what a fit. I hope we don't overflow. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, it's like I planned that out. Beautiful. I'm gonna pop some plastic over the top because uh, it's quite full. And now into my fridge this goes for the next three, four days. Five days later. Let's see how these ham shanks are looking. Ooh, smelling good, looking nice and hammy. Got a beautiful collar on there. Texture is feeling nice and firm. Oh, smells so good. Gotta love that. Oh yeah, these herbs off of there. There's some big boys. Now I'm gonna take these inside real quick and give them a quick rinse under some cold water just to get off any of this extra brine and cure or any of these extra mustard seeds or herbs that might be stuck to these guys. Looking good. And we could easily throw these on the pit right now and get some tasty little bites. But I'm gonna go on with a bit of a dry rub to add some more flavor and give us that nice Texas-y style bark we all know and love. Starting with some 16 mesh black pepper, some coriander, granulated garlic, some dry rosemary, and some dry sage. And you can pretty much add whatever you want. I just wanna add some pepper for that nice crust and also kind of drive home those wonderful fall ham flavors that we've got in that brine. 
Beautiful. And simply enough, on we go. And this rub is two parts 16 mesh black pepper, one part coriander, and then one half part of everything else. Pepper heavy, a little bit of floral notes. Ah, it's gonna be tasty. And don't forget the sides, folks. Come on. Looking good to me. Let's fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna rock this pit around 275 degrees for the entire time. And these are pretty big and they're bone in. So I'm not really sure how long this is gonna take, but I will keep you posted. While these cook away, let's go ahead and make ourselves a little dipping sauce for down the road. <sighs> Starting with some apple cider vinegar, some mustard, some Worcestershire sauce, some chili powder, some cumin, some cayenne, black pepper, and some granulated garlic. I'm gonna just blend this on high for a good minute or two. And the reason I'm running it so high for so long is just because these blenders are so high powered that they actually heat up whatever you put in there. A lot of people utilize this function for making soups. So after just a few minutes, you can see there's some steam in there and this stuff is rocking about 130 degrees, which is great because the next ingredient is some honey. Oh yeah, a whole bunch of honey. And having this warm is just gonna help this melt down and incorporate a little bit more evenly. And the basic thought process behind this sauce is that it's somewhere between a honey mustard and a barbecue sauce. So it's clearly very heavy on the honey and the mustard, but it's also got the normal suspects you're gonna see in barbecue sauce, like the Worcestershire, the vinegar, the chili powder, a lot of black pepper, and it should taste great. And last thing going in is a little bit of some oil. Any neutral, non-flavored oil will work great. And this is a little trick we use down at Leroy and Lewis for the mustard sauce, which is a technique that we borrowed from the salt lick sauce, but this is just gonna add some extra body and richness to this sauce and kind of mellow out some of the harsher tones of the mustard and the vinegar and stuff. I'm just gonna slowly stream it in. Oh, beautiful stuff. And of course, be sure to taste it for seasoning. But well, that is looking absolutely beautiful to me. We are six hours into this shank cook and let's see how they are looking. Ooh, looking beautiful, lovely bark on there. We definitely achieved that Texas style bark we were looking for. Getting nice and sticky on the outside here. Incredibly hot, if you were wondering. But these are looking dark enough and crusty enough. Let's see what they're reading internal. Right around 180, 175, 180. So we're gonna wrap these up to finish off nice and quick. Let them steam a little bit. This is a new style of wrap that I am just now inventing called the Hershey Kiss Wrap. We'll have to try that on a brisket soon. A goose. Gotta say though, these are smelling real nice, feeling nice and tender already. Should not take long. Love it. We'll check back in in like an hour. About an hour, hour 20 later, these guys are coming off the pit. Clocked them right in around 200, 205 degrees and feeling very nice and tender and smelling nice and hammy. We're gonna let these rest for a little bit and then we'll dive on in. All right, y'all, I think it's time to see how these came out. Ooh, I mean, what doesn't look good about that? Just so soft. Look, I can just pull this apart. And I thought these were gonna shrink down a little bit more. Ooh, got some bag juices in here. Make a mess of things. Beautiful. Can't forget our little dippy dip sauce. That thickened up very nicely. Ooh, mm, that is phenomenal. Nice and smoky, nice and tender, smelling nice and hammy. Ooh, got a little stickiness to it. All right, I think it's time to see how these came out. Oh my goodness. Mm, that is so good. Oh boy, is that rich. Mm. So smoky, so hammy, so fatty. All these off cuts, these tougher cuts that are usually seen in braises like cheeks and short ribs and shanks, full of connective tissue, which is just perfect for the barbecue pick. It's all that extra collagen, just breaks down into gelatin, kind of like an oxtail, and uh, it makes for some excellent barbecue. Where's the bone? Oh, we got a ways to go. Oh. Mm, look at the color on that. It's a ham bone. Mm, with all that smokiness, it's reminding me of the pork strami video. Very similar. That is just ridiculous. So sticky. Mm. I mean, just look at this. I bet we could shred this. Shall we try? Oops, that's a good sign. It's like a little hand grenade. Pull the pin. Yeah, nice, clean bone. There you go. Just put this on a sandwich bun and call it a day. 
Oh, that's satisfying. Ham pulled pork. You don't see it, but why not? All this sticky bark in there. Ooh. Oh, this is fantastic smelling. What would you put on a ham taco or a ham sandwich? Maybe we'll make a hamburger. Oh, that's beautiful stuff. You put this on a toasted bun or maybe some rye bread with a slice of cheese on there. The best ham and cheese the world has ever seen. It's like barbacoa. I can't believe how much that shredded up, yet I'm still getting bites out of it. Very cool. Grab yourself a nice little chunk, a nice piece of bark into the honey mustard barbecue sauce. Ow. Mm. That is so good. Mm, just so much flavor. Definitely keeping this recipe around, folks. Best part is if you show up with it already shredded, you don't need to tell people that it's shank meat. They'll never know. Oh, that bark though. I gotta get just a piece of bark and sauce because I'm a glutton. Mm. But I mean, really, folks, what's not to like here? It tastes like ham. It cooked in six hours. It brined for only a couple of days. Definitely got to give this sauce a try. It's smoky and fatty and everything you want in life. I'm telling you, with the holidays coming up, this is definitely a great option for any table. Not to mention, pork shanks are super cheap. And it's just a beautiful, festive barbecue treat that you can just gnaw on or shred up. And these bones fit right into each other for easy cleanup. That's what I'm here for, folks. They're really helpful tips. Definitely making these again. These are so good. Like, oh, look at that. Bone just fell right out of there. And you could also butcher these down just like that. And you got yourself some pig wings. This is a good one, folks. Mm, so porky, yet so hammy, yet so smoky. Mm. And especially if you've never tried to make an actual full ham before, this is a great way to get some practice reps and make sure that brine is dialed in. But I'll have this recipe in the description because these are perfect. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. I think you're gonna like this one. Yeah, it's good, right? I can't help myself, folks. I'm just gonna keep going. Oh, nah, it's so good. Mm. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely incredible ham-brined pork shanks. I highly recommend giving this one a try. This is one of those rare occasions where something came out tasting way better than I expected it to. And I'm not sure why, you know? It's smoky, barky, delicious ham meat. But it really was a fantastic bite, and I'm gonna make sandwiches for the rest of the week. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!